Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you may be. Welcome to Starwind Technical Webinar Series. And our topic today is Starwind Hyperconverged Appliance, the virtualization solution of choice for SMBs and robots you can get in one package. Uh, my name is Max Klamitiv. I'm your host for today's webinar. And uh, a few housekeeping items before we begin. Just wanted to make sure you see the video and you do have good audio. Please drop me a few feedback messages into questions and answers box of the GoToWebinar control panel and uh, we'll get started. All right, got good audio feedback. Just in case, if you are getting low audio or video quality, it is a good idea to reconnect to the GoToWebinar panel. Usually it works. I don't know the magic behind it, but it's still there. Right, uh, so one more thing. We are recording this webinar for later view. So feel free to get on YouTube later today or tomorrow and you be able to share the download link and the webinar link with your friends and colleagues. Now, a little bit about our speakers today. Our first speaker is uh, Mr. Simon Perman. Simon is Vice President of Business Development and Marketing with Feynman. Previously, he was Microsoft Senior Technical Evangelist and Worldwide Tech Lead covering Hyper-V, Windows Server and System Center. Trained millions of IT pros, holds several patents on his own and dozens of industry certifications, including VMware VCP. And he also co-authored the Introduction to System Center 2012 R2 for IT Pros book by Microsoft. You can also contact Simon if you have any questions to him using the contact information below. Then, our next speaker is Ryan Foss. Ryan is systems engineer with Beam Software. He's been with uh, Beam for a long time, has more than 10 years of IT experience, and is a frequent presenter on virtualization topics and on backup topics. And we've done tons of webinars together already. And uh, myself, Max Klamatsev, Starwind Virtual Sen and Hyperconverged Appliance Product Manager. More than 10 years with Star, well, more than nine years with Starwind and 11 years of IT experience. Uh, you can also find me on Spiceworks and actively contributing and helping SMBs and fellow IT pros to resolve their issues, as well as on other technical communities. Now, so what's the whole idea with the hyperconverged appliance and getting it was within a single package? We decided that we really need a solution for small medium businesses and also for robots to simplify their virtualization environment and to simplify their migration into a virtualized world and to make sure they're not buying tons of different servers, buying a separate SAN and building a whole complicated environment where they could go much easier than that with a solution we offer. Now, the hyperconverged appliance from Starwind unifies all you would ever need for your virtualization environment into a single ecosystem. Uh, right now we're working with Dell hardware. We use Windows Server Hyper-V or VMware vSphere hypervisor. And on top of that, there are three excellent tools getting your virtualization ecosystem self-sufficient and fully reliable. It's Starwind providing the storage availability. It's 5.9 software providing management capabilities as well as monitoring and security capabilities for the platform. And it's Veeam Backup, which fully covers the 
backups as well as disaster recovery plan for our offering now uh, don't get confused there are multiple brands out here and uh, here's the thing you can always go with part of them so with Starwinds Hyperconverge solution we don't force you to buy everything together let's say you already have the hardware or you're already a Starwind customer you can always come to us and say hey I already have one of the pieces for this puzzle can you help me out we'll definitely help you out it's not that product where you can only buy a box and this is the number of components you have you cannot change it no you'll see it through our slides and it's completely different with Starwind's hyperconverged appliance. There are several models with Starwind hyperconverged appliance. We start with the Starwind HAS, which is just a tower server for those small offices who don't even have a rack and may not need a rack. That may be too much for them. And there may be space constraints or it's just a small kiosk and uh, it's really facing the customer flow so it cannot fail at any time but it shouldn't have a big IT infrastructure. It's a base for the hyperconverged appliance. You can see one node configuration on the left and the two node starter set configuration on the right. Pretty much standard setup. I would say this pricing starts with roughly 6,000 USD for two systems. So a really good place to start with your virtualization environment. Now, the more typical approach with the hyperconverged setup would be Starwind HA model L, or we also call it large. You can see the individual config on the left. It's just one unit Dell server, so pretty dense environment. And uh, two node starter set, available on the right. Uh, these act more as scale-out units and are good building blocks for a bigger virtualization environment with average storage requirements. And of course there is Starwind HAXL which is for more dense and more storage hungry and IOPS hungry environments and this is also a really good candidate for VDI deployments. So it's a 2U Dell server with up to 24 drives and up to two 2695 V2. In, the, in this case, it's already V3 CPUs. It can have up to 1024 gigabytes of RAM and can get more than 9.6 terabytes of space actually at this point. We just upgraded the configuration so we can now go even more storage within the two unit enclosure. Now, what makes Starwind Hyperconverged Appliance different from the others? Uh, let's say you have the initial node. We took the R630 Dell as a reference, just a standard one unit server. You have your hardware configuration on the right and with most vendors, that's what you get and that's what you cannot change. But with Starwind, it's different. With Starwind, you want to upgrade the CPU, there you go. You want to get more RAM and more drives, there you go. You can definitely do that. You just contact Starwind, you upgrade your system. Then, typically, if we're looking at hyper-converged vendors, like big players on the market, we can only scale out so you can add more nodes and that's the only way you can grow your IT infrastructure. With Starwind you can also scale up by adding more disk enclosures to the individual servers. And uh, this also applies for the components for the individual servers. So there is really much more flexibility with Starwind hyperconverged appliance compared to most of the other plays on the hyperconverged vendor market. 
Uh, now, a quick question to the audience. I just saw a brief spike of uh, audio breaking up. So could you please reconfirm that you have uh, good video and audio quality with GoToWebinar? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, so we got at least 12 people confirming everything's fine. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I would like to make sure that everyone is getting the picture and the video. Okay, yeah, so one more comment. If you are dialing in from your phone to go to webinar, you may get bad audio quality. You may try to di different numbers for go to webinar to dial in, but VoIP always worked better for us. Okay, sorry for that hiccup. I'm getting back to the presentation. Now, uh, what is it that uh, makes our hyperconverged approach better than traditional approaches. What you typically do with the traditional approach is follow the rectangles in the lower part of the slide. So your virtual machine runs on the hypervisor, then this hypervisor, when it needs to write some data to the disk, it goes to some sort of initiator, either iSCSI initiator or an HPA card in the server, then that data is transmitted over the network, then it goes to the SAN, hits the cache on the SAN, and only then it goes to the disk. So the rectangles in the middle from hypervisor to cache have the red arrows between them. This is where your IO actually hits a bottleneck. And uh, the cache on the SAN, which is essentially DRAM, is hidden behind the network with slow network link, a comparably slow one. And there is a lot of time data needs to spend to get there. So we decided, why don't we just use local DRAM on the boxes as write cache and write directly into server's memory instead of going all the way through the network and processing data that way. So in our case, we work with the local DRAM, we work with local storage, and thereby we are able to achieve near in-memory performance with our solution. Because we never bottleneck our I.O. through the network or any storage fabric of any sort. Now, the solution also offers disaster recovery replication, because you always need to have multiple copies of your data. Ryan will definitely tell more than I about three to one rule, but the idea is to keep at least three copies of your data in two different locations. Stalbent offers that, Veeam also helps with that, with the hyperconverged appliance. So that is a really good offer to make sure that your virtualization environment is not only rapidly deployed but also protected. Now, this slide is called more than just and I actually didn't know how to call it because uh, it's more than just hardware, it's more than just builds server, it's more than just picking components for you and shipping everything to you together. Start with hyperconverged plans is just more than that. Uh, once we have worked out a configuration for you, once we ship the system to you and configured it, either on our site or once it arrived at your location, we integrated it into your environment, we essentially babysit your system. So we support your hardware, we support the hypervisor, we support the storage stack, and we support backup and management. And we do that 24-7. So when purchasing the Starwin Hyperconverged Appliance, you're not only getting a Lego constructor, you're essentially getting a kit which is fully supported by the vendor, stands behind that. And that's, uh, I think, I would say unique about this solution. So you never get the vendor finger pointing in case of 
a do-it-yourself solution. Like, no, it's Microsoft. No, it's the backup solution. No, it's the storage solution. I guess all of us have been in that game sometime. So it's a good thing we are able to avoid it by delivering you this solution. Uh, with that, I would like to wrap up my part of the presentation and switch it over to Simon. And Simon will tell you about how the platform is managed, how everything is configured, and uh, how easy it is to control the platform. Simon? Thank you so much. Um, could you let me know if you can see my screen yet? I can see your screen right on the slide where I stopped. Okay. Excellent. Well, what we're trying to do here with Starwin, Veeam, and 5.9 software is really deliver a unified management experience. And what you're actually going to be able to see in the demo in a couple minutes is how we've integrated the Starwin storage management along with 5.9 and Veeam all into a single unified console. So this gives you the ability to just be able to centrally manage everything. Now, if you're new to Hyper-V or maybe you're moving from VMware, one of the challenges that we hear from a lot of people is the fact that there's so many different consoles that you have to go to to complete a task. So with 5.9 Manager and our partners, we wanted to bring everyone together. So you just have a single place to go to be able to configure, manage, and optimize your entire virtual infrastructure. Now with 5.9 Manager, we've really tried to bring in all of the key things that small and medium businesses need to use to go and run that entire virtual infrastructure, including the virtual machines, the disks, the networks, and all of the associated user roles and permissions for that. What we're really trying to do is provide a cost-effective solution. Now, a lot of people uh, compare us to System Center to Virtual Machine Manager. And while it's true that we have a lot of the same features, um, System Center really is designed for large enterprises. Now, what we've tried to do here is take the best of System Center, yet remove a lot of the complexity around it. So we don't require any type of dedicated hardware or uh, dedicated infrastructure to go and run the solution. In fact, 5.9 Manager can run on just 512 megabytes of RAM. So it's less than a gig that you'll actually use to run and operate this. And if you compare that to something like System Center Virtual Machine Manager, you want to allocate at least 8 to 16 just for that. Then you also have things to consider, such as databases, your SQL server, running all of those up, getting those configured. So we just wanted a really streamlined solution, quick to install, quick to operate, yet still fully integrated, giving you all the tools which you need. We do also have an antivirus addition, which includes our agentless antivirus technology. So if you're a smaller organization, you're just running the infrastructure, and you don't have a security specialist, this is a great built-in solution that gives you antivirus capabilities without needing to go learn any special tools or technologies. Now, what we've tried to do with Starwind and Veeam in our version one release of our integration here is give you built-in reporting capabilities so that you can see the health of all of your environment, including the health of your storage, your hosts, as well as the health of your backup system with Veeam. Now, one thing that I want to mention here is that um, you know, our solutions are fully integrated whether you go with the hardware appliance from Starwind or if you already have your own hardware, you can still take advantage of Starwind's uh, vSAN management, Veeam's backup, and 5.9 with your existing hardware as well. So while we certainly do recommend and encourage you to get the appliance, which is fully integrated, fully tested, if you already have that same hardware, you can still take advantage of these capabilities today. Now, configuration of these different components is pretty easy. You can actually deploy the Starwind, the 5.9, and the Veeam software independently in any order and still have an integrated solution. So many of you may have already invested in one of the three of us, one of these three uh, in the partnership, and that's fine. You can still work with your existing deployment, yet add these additional components and still have an end-to-end -end integrated solution. Um, support is obviously critical, and I really want to emphasize the point that Max was just talking about. You know, even though we are three individual companies here, we're part of a larger family, and we want to make sure that you can get the support you need through a single vendor. And this is going to be critical for you, you know, just simplifying, streamlining any type of configuration or ongoing support issues that you have.
Now, as we kind of look into the details of our integration with Veeam, what we try to do here is take a look at all of the key metrics around storage and make sure that we can uh, bubble those up and report them through our centralized management console. So you're going to see in our demo shortly, you have the ability with reporting to see all of the key metrics around your storage management. And additionally, get alarms as well, all pushed into a single console. Now the benefit of unifying all of these into a single console is that you just have to go to a single place in the morning when you get into work to kind of see the health of your infrastructure. Now if you still want to do different types of advanced configuration, you certainly can use the existing style window or the existing Veeam console. And what we see most customers do is spend the time with those consoles getting things set up. Then once they're running, just using 5.9 Manager for day-to-day -day regular operations. And through this, we're going to be able to uh, register the most important alarms around your storage, taking a look at when you run out of capacity, when your cache is full and perhaps needs extended, how successful your deduplication is, different types of errors that you might see for the different storage protocols that are supported, like iSCSI, SMB file shares, and NFS. And then, of course, just traditional uh, errors that you're going to get in that Ethernet-based storage adapter. When we've added Veeam, what we wanted to do with the leading backup and replication company was a similar model, where you've gone and uh, set everything up using the key Veeam console, and then your day-to-day -day reporting and operational tasks are all reported up through 5.9 Manager. So this is going to give you the status of all of your virtual machines that you're protecting, as far as you know how frequently they're being backed up, the success of that backup, how many restore points you have. It's going to send you alarms as well. It's going to list certain jobs that you've tried to run and whether those have failed or have problems. And we even have a few uh, context-based action menus here. So if you see that a job has failed, you can actually restart it and retry it straight through 5.9 Manager. And then finally, the health of your repositories. Now, what we've really tried to focus on is just providing you with a single pane of glass for all of your management. So again, we're centralizing everything, putting it all into a single location. Now, I'm going to switch over to our demos and actually walk you through the interface that we have here. Now, the very first demo, I'm actually going to jump to two different demo systems here. The first demo system I'm going to show you is an environment that's in a panic state where we're ru rapidly running out of resources. I have no disk space left. Just to kind of show you um, the level of interaction that you can get. Then we'll jump back and kind of give you a broader overview of 5.9 Manager. So as you can see, taking a look at my environment here, I see that my hosts and my VMs are not looking so good. Let's actually go and take a look at the Starwing console and see if we could get any information about this. Now as I take a look at my CPUs here, we can see that they're pretty flat, so I certainly don't have any CPU issues. I take a look at my disk and I actually don't see any data, so I don't see any IOPS going through. That's pretty concerning to me. Now, as I take a look at the other metrics here, I see my memory is pretty static, so uh, yet I don't have any bandwidth. So if I'm troubleshooting the solution, what this implies to me is that my physical servers are healthy, but there's actually a problem with the storage and actually accessing that, since there's no IOPS going through the system and no bandwidth is being consumed. So that's really going to help me identify the issue. Now, from here, if I want to go do some advanced troubleshooting, I can simply launch the Starwind console. This gives me the same consistent information, same management experience that you're already used to. Now, if, for example, we go and change any of the information here, such as, oh, let's force this drive to be removed, what we'll actually see down here in the alarms is that something's changed. So I can go take a look. I see some information. I see that things have actively changed. Now, what I really want to highlight here is also the real-time interaction. That was literally a second from removing the drive that I saw this information push through to 5.9 Manager. Really trying to highlight and show that as soon as we can identify the problems, we're going to go and raise them to you so that you can resolve them faster and have higher business continuity for your virtual machines. Next, let's go take a look at Veeam. Now we can see that we've got quite a few alerts and other pieces of information coming in here. So I'm going to zoom in and we can take a look at these one at a time. Now the first thing that we see at the top here is our list of protected virtual machines. We see when everything's been backed up 
and looks pretty straightforward. Doesn't seem to be too many issues there. Now, as I go down and take a look at the alarms, though, I can see quite a few things. There's some issues with the backup, and it looks like there's a problem actually right into the storage here. So we could go take a look at these alarms, and it says there's a particular location that is not being written to. Hmm. This and I see lots and lots of these same alarms. This could definitely indicate that there's a problem actually accessing and doing a backup to my storage. Let's now move down to the jobs window and take a look at here for more information. So I can see my backup jobs have a warning. Hmm, definitely some problems here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and reinitiate that backup job. So I can select it and let's retry it. So I'll go ahead, I'll do that for a couple of my jobs, and hopefully they'll get backed up. But what you should uh, be able to see here over, the, uh, over this entire infrastructure is that we are able to pull in all of this additional information and data from Veeam and from Starwind. Now if I want to do any additional configuration with Veeam, I also have this handy button that's going to go and launch the Veeam console as well. So what we hope to do over time as well with each of our future iterations is continue to get better integration between these products, continue to merge them, and offer you additional control and capabilities straight through 5.9 Manager. Now I'm going to go switch to my healthy demo environment as well. It's just going to be a little more responsive as I click through and show you the overall 5.9 Manager interface. Now first thing you're going to notice on the left is the tree light navigation. And what we're able to do is provide you a view of your entire data center at the highest level, at the cluster level, at the node level, and then for each individual virtual machine. So if I take a look at the data center level, it's going to give me the overall health of all of my clusters, my nodes, and my virtual machines. And you'll also see that we've gone and filtered all of these different alarms. So what we're basically doing here is pushing up information from your entire data center, all of the virtualized infrastructure, and pushing up all the information. So this makes it pretty easy for you. If you and um, you know, if you want to cancel out some of the less important alarms, we can do filtering on that so that we only see the errors. Now I'm going to go select at the uh, node level and I'll take you through some more of the interface here. So when I select a specific host, I do get information about the host, what type of hardware it's using, things like that. I can also connect to it directly via an RDP session. If I take a look at an individual virtual machine, we get information that you might expect to see through something like 5.9 Manager, where in addition to getting the alarms, it's going to give us useful information about the infrastructure, the type of storage it's using, and also give us previews of the information too. Now, the next thing I'm going to select here is uh, pick one of my VMs. So let's pick a running virtual machine that we have here. And we can see kind of the standard info right at the bottom. We can get a little preview. We can see the health, the memory, things like that. Now, one other thing that I want to call to your attention is this other tab for replication. 5.9 Manager actually supports Hyper-V Replica. This is um, something that even System Center Virtual Machine Manager doesn't do. So this is all fully integrated into our management. Now another thing that we've tried to do to really simplify the configuration of your infrastructure is you can go and make changes to one host and apply those changes to every other host in your environment. This way you can guarantee consistency. So, for example, let's say I want to change the number of simultaneous live migrations that I'm allowed to do. So, currently, we're using the default, which is 2. Why don't we go and adjust that to 6? Down here, you'll see that I have this other button, which says Apply the Settings to All Hosts. I click that, and I can immediately select and apply those changes. So it makes it very easy to ensure that you have that consistency across every node. Now there was one question that I saw come up earlier, um, which actually asked whether all of the hardware on the cluster nodes had to be identical. Now from the perspective of failover clustering, it's recommended that they're identical, but not required. And the reason why it's recommended is if you have a running virtual machine, you want to make sure that that VM behaves the exact same way on every cluster node. 
You don't want it to have different behavior because it's accessing a different network adapter or there's a different firmware version on the host. Now in theory, it should work um, and failover clustering actually does have a series of built-in validation tests that will go and verify that, but it's not required. So our uh, best practice is to try to have them the same, but again, not required. Now we can also see that we can configure replication and again, apply those settings to all of those hosts if we wish. Now let's move down the stack here. So we've taken a look at our actual virtual machine management. If I click virtual network management, I can go and create, edit, and change any of my virtual switches. So kind of similar to what you might expect through 5.9 Manager here as well. And we can go and actually adjust these switches, push them out to different interfaces. So you get, you get a little bit of advanced uh, switch management capability here as well. Next we have our optimizer technology. Um, optimizer allows you to low balance virtual machines across different cluster nodes or even across individual Hyper-V hosts. This is similar to the feature in System Center Virtual Machine Manager known as dynamic optimization or VMware's distributed resource scheduling. Essentially what we do here is we go and add one of our nodes or a collection of nodes into a group. So here we can see that we have a group that we can use for our cluster. So we'll call this our demo2 group. And then it's going to ask us what different threshold settings do we want to configure. And what this basically means is if my CPU goes above 90%, it means that this host is overwhelmed, we're then going to go and live migrate a virtual machine to the host that has the least amount of running CPU. And again, the whole goal is really just to low balance the resources across the infrastructure to avoid overwhelming a single host, which would in turn go and slow down all of those virtual machines that are running on it. If we go take a look here, we can absolutely see all of these spikes in real time. So I can see that we've just had a huge disk spike. We hit 100% capacity. And let's see, that was about 1.33 p.m. If I go back to my summary, I take a look at all of my alerts here. What we'd actually find is an alert that says not enough memory, CPU, we've gone above 90%. So you can see that this is actually picking up all of these different alerts and it's doing my load balancing for me. Now the next capability that we've added is basic resource monitoring for your virtual machines and your hosts. So we took the four most common metrics that people care about with virtualization, which is memory, CPU, disk I.O., and network I.O., and we visualize those. So this means that you can go and actually in real time take a look at the health of your infrastructure. But more importantly, we realize that people need historical information about that as well. So we can actually break it down and if I know that I've had a problem, you know, something may have crashed over the weekend, I actually have the ability to go and take a look at this historical data going back as long as my database can support or specify in a specific time so that we could try to track down and figure out the issue. Now, 5.9 Manager, uh, it supports the free version of SQL, SQL Express, and it also supports the full version of SQL if you want to have a larger data store, keep track of more historical data, or even go and take the information and leverage SQL's advanced reporting capabilities like SQL Server Reporting Services. Now, the next thing that we wanted to integrate here as well, and this is big for people that have uh, compliance and regulatory needs, is the ability to easily and quickly generate a system status report. And what's basically happening here is we're going to go and query all of the infrastructure, the different nodes, virtual machines, and actually give you a printed out report that you can save as a PDF, you can export it to Exchange, that shows you how everything's configured and how all of the workloads are running. So for example, I'll zoom in here. I can see that for the most part, my infrastructure is pretty healthy. But we could take advantage of things like this for capacity planning, resource utilization, budgeting. So really uh, quite a powerful tool here and it'll certainly save you time from having to document and inventory everything yourself. We also introduced one of the best hidden features within Windows Server, which are the built-in best practice analyzers. In fact, a lot of people don't even know that these exist, but these are in the core Windows Server product. And what they're basically going to do is run a series of tests against your infrastructure and 
just give you recommendations about how to make you more resilient, uh, how to optimize to sustain additional failures, other types of features that you should turn on or turn off. So all of that's again integrated into the console. We then have logging that's built in. So if you want to see the health of your infrastructure, we'll just go push all of the different logs all through 5.9 Manager. So again, it's going back to that theme of convenience, not having to learn where to go and have all these different interfaces. We're giving you all of the tools you need in a single location. We then have the ability to actually manage resources through a concept of a library. And a library is essentially a file share that allows you to store virtual machines, virtual hard disks, or other resources that you may want to reuse multiple times. Now, one of the most common cases of why people like the library is if they're redeploying the same type of virtual machine again and again. Instead of having to deploy your new web server as you scale up and manually reconfigure everything and hope that you don't make a mistake, you can actually configure everything a single time inside a virtual machine template and then just redeploy it as many times as you need. So we can configure every type of setting that we want here, just as you would do for Hyper-V, save it, and deploy virtual machines from this template as many times as you need. Now another thing that people really like to take advantage of here as well with our template technology is you can actually take a running virtual machine, clone it, or sysprep it. So what this will actually do is it will take the VM, it will convert it to a template, and it will even run sysprep on it, which goes through a process known as generalization, which will basically strip all of the uniquely identifying information from it such as GUIDs, server name, time zone, user accounts. So really it, uh, designed here to make things as simple as possible. And finally, as I mentioned, we do have the antivirus option as well, where you can go and uh, get agentless antivirus using Kaspersky, ThreatTrack, and coming soon, we're also going to be integrating with Bitdefender. So giving you a lot of great capabilities and simplifying all of that management. All right, well, that wraps up the demo there. Hopefully, you can see the value that we can really bring to customers of all sizes using 5.9 Manager integrated with Veeam and with Starwind. All right, Ryan, over to you. I appreciate it, Simon. Uh, so let me see. You want me to take control on your, your machine there? Is that fine? Or? Why don't you take control? All right, and we'll keep it there. So I'm sure, um, let's see. There we go. So yeah, uh, you know, uh, talk about hyperconverged systems. I mean, that that is something to me that 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 screams modern data center. You know, really having everything in one place to really help evolve, scale out uh, within your your own data center itself. But you know, what is that definition of the modern data center? Right? Uh, you know, twenty four seven access. You know, users are wanting their data every single day when they want it. Maybe not on on your time schedule. So, you know, that really requires a lot of uptime, you know, reducing the downtime, you know, of the infrastructure so, again, users can access their data. And you really have to handle, you know, the 30 to the 50 percent, you know, data growth. You know, that's kind of what's expected almost on a, a yearly, every two-year basis. And, and having infrastructure to do that, you know, really helps. So, you know, where Veeam comes into play is really helping what we call bridge, you know, the, uh, bridging the availability gap, right? Uh, making sure that you, you have your infrastructure up, it's, it's up and running 24-7, finding issues before they happen, making sure data is backed up so, look, you can get everything restored quickly. So, from an aspect of what's included with, you know, the conferred system from Starwinds is what we call our Veeam Essential Standard. It is something that's packaged for a small business uh, infrastructure. Uh, but it includes two products. We have our Veeam Backup and Replication, and we have our Veeam One product. Uh, so Veeam Backup and Replication is our, our bread and butter, our cornerstone product of protecting the infrastructure, backing up the virtual machines, you know, being able to do your resource. Where our Veeam One product is our, our monitoring reporting tool. So a lot of overlap with what we just saw, you know, with 5.9 integration and the, the alerting and some, you know, the, the reporting that we're able to do at the, you know, hypervisor level. Now, you know, 5.9, um, you know, with it, you know, focused on Hyper-V, you know, with Veeam, we also support VMware. Again, for anyone that has, you know, data center already in place that, that maybe you have VMware currently going to Hyper-V or uh, whatever it may be, we do have support for both VMware, Hyper-V. But for the focus today, I mean, really, Hyper-V is, is what we're 
talking about today, but again, a lot of things, again, translate over. So from an architecture standpoint and how Veeam fits in place, again, if you if you want to Veeam separately, you already have you know, some infrastructure, right? It's a 15, 20 minute setup. Uh, getting that in place, it's a, it's a typical Windows install, installed on a 64-bit OS of Windows, and, and that's it. Right. We're completely agentless, so there's nothing that's having to go on the virtual machine itself in order to back up or even replicate the virtual machine. Uh, and then we have our own built-in deduplication and compression. So we talked about the first piece of the architecture there, the Veeam server, the quick install, the GUI, where you're actually you know, doing all the management for Veeam. We also have what we call proxy servers. These are the data movers. And in a Hyper-V infrastructure, it's very easy. It's either on host or off host. Uh, and with the, uh, you know, the converged systems here, on host is primarily going to be the method, uh, taking the host itself, using the resources that are available to do the, you know, uh, DDP compression and send it to the third piece of the architecture, which is the backup repository. So kind of want to throw out a best practice here with the backup repository when you start looking at, you know, where your backups are going. You know, you can back up to the Veeam server. But if you have that as a virtual machine within that hyper-converged system, you know, on the Starwin uh, offering, you know, your backups are sitting in the same place where, you know, the production data is running. So I, I do recommend having a storage device sitting outside, maybe repurpose some hardware and, uh, you, know, you know, brush some dust off and then have, the, you know, the Starwin uh, free, you know, virtual sand, right? That makes a great backup target for Veeam. So I kind of want to throw that as far as architecture there. So once you have backups, it's really about the restore capabilities at that point. Quick restores, instant VM recovery, have you up and running in a couple minutes. We can actually run it from the backup storage. And then leveraging tools like live migration from Hyper-V, we can move that directly back to a hydrated state, uh, back to the host of your choice, back to the storage of your choice. Whereas we can still do a full virtual machine recovery, it takes longer. You don't have to worry about the migration process later but it's fully hydrated, fully ready to go at the location you decide. File level restores. We can explore restore points individually. We can use our one-click file restore uh, to do everything as well. And we do have Veeam Explorers. Uh, so we have Active Directory, Exchange, SharePoint Explorers, allowing you to go in and export out uh, the items. Um, and the reason I say export op out options only is that with the included addition of Veeam Essentials, that is uh, ultimately uh, what we are offering. Right. Um, from there, uh, you know, achieving three, two, one. Uh, restores are, are, I mean, the, the backups are great, but if you only have one copy, you know, what's going to happen if your main data center goes down? So with Veeam, we have a couple offerings. You know, we have backup copy jobs. So this is going to be uh, you know, one backup repository to another, whether it's local, you know, whether it's off-site, again, getting data off-site. Uh, that could go to a, a cloud. We have Cloud Connect partners out there with Veeam that have their own infrastructure to, to accept Veeam backups. Right? We also have tape support. Um, you know, if that's something you all are still leveraging, maybe it's based on policies. Well, with that, um, we can leverage tape. Any Windows server that has the attachment of that tape device will work. Replication. So, so very similar to Hyper-V replication, you also would have built-in replication with Veeam, uh, sending virtual machines from one Hyper-V host to another. Again, same thing on the VMware side as well. And a lot of these options can happen locally, can happen off-site, you know, whether it's more of a high availability setup or, you know, again, disaster recovery. So from a, another product here, the Veeam One product, uh, again, there is some overlap with some of the alerting and everything we saw with the, the 5.9 integration, the dashboards we have there. Um, there's probably going to be some stuff that we have that you wouldn't be able to find in the 5.9 uh, side, and vice versa. Um, but we do have our integration there, pulling the infrastructures, the alerting, uh, what if, capacity planning reports, some great stuff there. And then... Um, a lot of backup and replication reports as well as far as making sure you're covering a certain recovery point objective, uh, making sure that you have enough copies of your backups, all that. So a couple, a couple hints there. I mentioned the first one here. We have our backup repository, having that separate from the hyper-converged system. We also have automatic load balancing you know, between our proxies, 
or repositories, you can set up number of concurrent tasks. So you don't have to sit there and overload what the backup repository is trying to write as data comes in. But also making sure you don't you know, put too many proxies out there. Um, you know, let our intelligent load balancing do what it needs to do. And so this all leads to the customization, right? Whether it's in backup or replication, customizing to fit your needs with those you know, resource capabilities as far as the, the load balancing, but also from a Veeam one side, making the reports, making the alerts, set the thresholds that you want. You have all that. And so really leverage the tools to your fullest, right? They're included within the system um, to, to be used to the fullest, and we want you to take advantage of that, uh, protecting your data, alerting, monitoring, all that great stuff. And so a couple other points here is that we do have other additions, right? We are just including the standard essentials addition within uh, the Starwind offering, uh, but we have Enterprise and Enterprise Plus. A couple key features, this is something you would be looking to upgrade. Sure backup, testing your backups, having an on-demand sandbox. The applications, right, we can restore the email back directly to the Exchange database. You don't have to export it out as a PST. Uh, we have our, our file level restores from our web interface as well. Uh, so you can search and browse across multiple store points, multiple virtual machines to find a particular file. And then we also have some DD compliance integrations right? um, with uh, ExaGrid, EMC Data Domain, and HP Store One. So those are available options uh, you know, to target and take advantage on top of what we're already you know, DDP and compressing. Enterprise Plus brings in a couple things such as WAN acceleration. Uh, you know, making sure that data can travel more efficiently from site A to site B. We have self-service recovery, allowing your help desk associates, maybe allowing trustful users to go do their own file level resource, say from one virtual machine or all virtual machines. You can give them access to what you want. And depending on your, your setup or if you're on a cloud provider side or a large organization, we do have some RESTful API that can be accessed uh, to create your own custom web portals. So. Um, just you know, a, a few quick points that I wanted to make there, uh, really before we you know, jump in here to the question and answer. All right, thanks, Ryan. And uh, <clears throat> we're now finished with the presentation part, and we are open to answer any questions you may have regarding the hyperconverged appliance or its individual components. And uh, we've got a first question coming in from Peter. Can this be applied as a software solution to an existing two-node cluster in a box solution without purchasing the appliance? And the answer is yes. You can apply it as a software solution as well. So we'll check that the hardware is fit for the task and uh, see how we can integrate the software offering into it. So as I mentioned previously, there is, with this solution, there is no need to purchase everything. If you do have existing similar servers with valid support, there is also an option to do it as a software package. Or if you have just software, but you want to get hardware from us, we will gladly provide it with the hardware. And believe me, the prices would be better than you get from your local Dell dealer. Now, uh, here's a question from Kernhard. Uh, for Veeam, how do you handle Hyper-V backup compared to VMware, since there is no such thing as change block tracking? That's a, that's a great question, and it's actually ultimately the same, because what we did here at Veeam is we actually created our own change block tracking engine that we deploy uh, to each of the Hyper-V hosts. So it is a, a Microsoft-approved uh, component. Um, so it is tracking the changes for our jobs. So we can still take advantage of incremental backups without having to, again, reread the entire virtual machine. So you are in luck. That's something we'll implement to each of the Hyper-V hosts that you add into the OK, thanks, Ryan. And uh, one more question from Craig. Is there a VMware hypervisor solution as well, fully set up? Yes, there is a VMware hypervisor solution as well. With VMware, we tend to use the native uh, vSphere Manager and vCenter for managing the cluster. Uh, but other than that, the look and feel 
remains the same. You get a unified platform with uh, Starwind, the Dell servers, and Veeam and vSphere running on your premise and uh, delivering you a highly reliable and highly available virtualization environment. So yes, just to add on to that, 5.9 Manager is designed exclusively for Hyper-V, so uh, we cannot use 5.9 Manager to manage VMware. Right, right. Okay, a uh, few more questions coming in. Okay, a question from Lawrence. Does that have the capability of SRM? So yes, the VMware version does have the capability for SRM. And for the Hyper-V version, uh, we do support Hyper-V Replica which would be the equivalent to Site Recovery Manager. So um, yes, you can configure that. You can configure replication, the schedule, everything that you can do directly through, uh, through Hyper-V Manager, you can configure on the replication. The piece that is missing, though, that Site Recovery Manager has and Hyper-V Replica does not is the ability to actually uh, create scheduled plans, where if you're failing over and you want to bring up your virtual machines in a different order, um, that's not built into the product, but certainly something that you can do with scripting. Or Microsoft actually uh, offers an Azure-based service known as Azure Site Recovery, and that will actually allow you to schedule and coordinate the failover. Um, and actually gives you more capabilities than Site Recovery Manager as well. And Ryan here from Beam, um, as a up, one of the other upgraded additions for the enterprise, we with Beam replication. Uh, we do have the failover plans and plan failover as well. So bringing that SRM type functionality uh, to the Veeam replication. So I think we're covered with with, uh, with all the different types of ways of doing it. Yeah, Five, yeah. And yeah, and Starwind can also do Azure replication of the entire LAN. So if you want to spin up your infrastructure or part of it in Azure, that is also possible. And combined with uh, Five Nines, Azure recovery, and that gives you quite a few options to build your disaster recovery and business continuity plans. Okay, a uh, question from Kernrat. Uh, how does this platform compare to big hyper-converged players on a pricing level? Uh, it does play really well and you'll be really surprised with the prices for the systems because uh, the top system we currently sell, excluding the all flash systems, which should be out on the market within the next three or four weeks. The top system is uh, under 100,000. So this is just a price, to, ballpark price to consider. I'm not really allowed to announce any exact prices because there are really a lot of the configurations and a lot of uh, support options available with this scenario. And as we previously mentioned, you can go with different components. So depending on the number of components you need, the price is also different. And uh, I'll just add one comment from the 5.9 manager perspective. Um, you know, we are designed for SMB, so we do provide a very affordable solution uh, that comes in about 8% the price of System Center. So, you know, what we've tried to do here is collaborate and really offer you the best value for your dollar. Um, and as well, the fact that we're offering a shared collaborative solution also means that you're getting further discounts there. So, um, I mean, we can pretty confidently say that we're definitely one of the most affordable solutions in the industry. That is true. Thank you, Simon. Uh, one more question from Peter. Does the two-node appliance provide HA for storage versus the one-node? Well, I'm not sure. One node appliance does provide any HA for storage, unless it's a RAID 10, but it, I wouldn't really call it HA. So two node appliance does provide full storage, full tolerance. And uh, Hyper-V based appliance does do HA on the virtual machine level. So should one server fail, the virtual machines are restarted on the second node. With vSphere, you can also go with full tolerance. So if you like, if you have absolutely mission critical machine which cannot go down, you can do VMware fault tolerance. If you there is a workaround though, if you want that on Hyper-V, you can do a guest virtual machine cluster so that one node can fail and second node will keep up using the clustered VM running on it. 
Uh, let's see. One more question from Craig. What is the MSRP of a tunnel solution? So just as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there are so many different options. I would just say that the start starting MSRP is uh, around 5,000 USD and uh, the maximum configuration excluding all flash is under 100,000 way on un way under 100,000 okay uh, one more question from Kernrod so HA to node doth both rate on the node itself plus block replication to the other node or only block replication it does both it does rate to get you redundancy and performance and it does block level replication for high availability and data resilience oh, one more question from Todd what type of network backbone eg 10 GB is required for your solution right now the minimum two node configuration does not require a dedicated backbone so the idea is that uh, we directly connect the nodes using 10 gigabit cables and this acts as dedicated backbone for the entire storage stack as you scale out beyond three nodes 10 gigabit backbone with redundant switching is required but with up to three servers we can do redundant setup without any 10 gigabit switching involved same applies with our configurations which utilize 40 gigabit or 50 gigabit ethernet okay one more question from Kernrod. does the system have cold hot data system so moving data between ssd and hdd tiers uh, it does not move them between the ssd and hdd instead we utilize multi-level caching so the data the hot data resides in your ram and in the ssd layer and colder data only resides on the hdd layer so instead of moving big chunks of data between the layers we utilize this these layers as cache which allows us to improve the performance and uh, prolongs the life of ssds as well and uh, fellow organizers could you please advance one slide please thank you so much uh, I guess these were all questions for our today's webinar I hope you enjoyed it and we answered all of your questions if you have any other questions or you would like to get the pricing we'll gladly provide that and we'll gladly answer any technical questions regarding the appliance as such or its components uh, just contact us anytime and we'll get back to you with the answers thank you everyone and bye bye thank you goodbye